Uh, good morning. I'm uh, very happy to be here with you. It's a good opportunity to share uh, our concerns on uh, GDPR and data protection rules applied to uh, 3D personal data, 3D models generations, generation using uh, personal data. And I think uh, it's a really important issue uh, to the future of industry. Of course, we are using this kind of modeling uh, for a lot of possibilities of innovation. And then I think it will be really, really relevant uh, to consider the conditions of legal compliance. Uh, let me say uh, first that in my case, uh, every time I have the opportunity to speak about GDPR, to speak about investigation, innovation, uh, technology, developing, and uh, the issues regarding our digital transformation, I really a strong underline the idea that when we are protecting data, we are protecting people. We are talking about human dignity. We are talking about freedom. We are talking about self-determination. And this is a, a core of the a, European Union culture on human rights. This is our model of innovation. I think that this is very, very hard uh, in terms of requirements. I think that sometimes we conceive that as a, an uncompetitiveness uh, situation. We are not in other countries when they have more possibilities uh, to act, uh, to use data uh, without this kind of uh, controls. But we are here, we are in Europe, and we are defending a human rights European model. And this is really important because I'm absolutely convinced that we could achieve our main goals on that issue, protecting rights, protecting people. Uh, then we have to consider the requirements of a project uh, regarding 3D modeling with uh, personal images. Uh, I uh, provide you uh, two or three scenarios. First of all, if you as a company uh, need to generate your own model on the basis of the, your customer's data, you have to fulfill the complete legal framework. It regards GDPR, but as we will see, it regards other national and European Union laws. It means that you have to implement a kind of clear philosophy you have to bet on data protection by design and data protection by default. And you have to consider the way that starts the journey from personal data to anonymization. Because at the end of the day, the most uh, or the best way to protect personal identity in this context, in this commercial area, in this healthcare research, is to anonymize the data, to model avatars, to model 3D uh, designs, to adapt to your customers. In any case, uh, you have to consider the risks when you are outsourcing the generation of the model. Please understand me. I'm not talking in a negative approach. I think that in the cloud uh, environments, I think in the transformation digital environment, Usually, we must outsource the services. We need a provider to do that. And then the processors agreement, the trust on your uh, supplier is absolutely essential. When you, uh, in the three, in a third scenario, uh, bet for use synthetic anonymized models, you will not apply GDPR, but you need to be confident, you need to be trust on your providers of the models. How to implement that? Uh, what you are uh, looking in uh, the screen, what you're seeing in the screen is the data protection uh, by design model from the Norway 
DPA, Norway Data Protection Authority. They developed a model uh, about uh, designing software, fulfilling GDPR. It's a really interesting document. Uh, first of all, we have to consider the legal landscape. In terms of laws, and it's really difficult because this is not only about GDPR. No, this, this is not only about general data protection regulation. Okay, if you have, if you are working on health, you have to consider the regulations of trials and the regulation of medical devices. If you uh, are working uh, using or uh, reusing public information, you have to consider the Open Data Directive and the national transpositions. And in fact, when this reuse of data uh, connects with a personal data, you have to apply GDPR. And it's the same in the case of regulation of the framework for the free flow of non-personal data in the European Union. And in addition, you have to apply national laws on data protection, privacy and image, civil law, healthcare sector. Uh, from that point of view, uh, in the case of Spain, to give you an example, you have to apply GDPR, the Article 6 1A on consent, because usually if you are processing data from your customers, you will need an explicit consent provided by them, because take measures, uh, take an image of your client is not part usually of a contract, it's a voluntary uh, activity from him or her. If you are researching, if you are investigating in healthcare, you need the additional legal basis of Articles 9H and 89 of GDPR. But we're in Spain. Then we have to consider what a national law states. And in case of research, you have to apply the exemption of consent of Article 9 or the different possibilities of the uh, 17th uh, provision about health and healthcare research in Spanish law. Of course, if uh, you are uh, dealing with consumers, they have the rights provided by the legal consumer's uh, environment. If you decide to anonymize, to anonymize the data, uh, you have to apply a GDPR uh, recital 26. We talk about uh, that immediately. And of course, it could be other fundamental rights concerned. In the case of Spain, we have an organic law from uh, 1982 that protects the family intimacy, the family privacy, and one's own image. And from that point of view, the image of a person in Spain uh, has two different rights to protect it. And this is really important. Okay, but first of all, from the point of view of accountability, you have to demonstrate that your organization is capable to implement measures to fulfill the regulation. You have to be sure about the legitimate origin of each image. Image, Probably the image provides from the customer. Okay, you have obtained the consent. Or not, this is a data set. You achieved a data set from a third party. Have, uh, do you have trust on that? They have obtained legally the data. They applied. GDPR, then you have, in addition, to adopt proactive actions in order to provide safeguards, as for example, information security. And you have to guarantee that the anonymized data cannot be re-identificated by third parties. How to do it? First of all, I recommend you strongly to consider the different guidelines produced by the DPAs, by the data protection authorities. They are really, really useful. You can't apply uh, the conditions of anonymization, of anonymization without uh, know the opinion five from 2014 of the uh, working group of article 29. Nowadays, the European Data Protection Board you have to consider the digital guidelines of these boards. You have to know that in your country, like in Spain, you have anonymization guidelines. 
I remember that the information commissioner of UK uh, has published one, is the case of Spain, I think is the case of France, and you have to consider the recommendations on security and uh, uh, the ways to process information in pseudonymization activities from INISA. Then let me underline that when we are talking about fulfill GDPR, there is a really important uh, environment of soft law provided by or with guidelines. And sometimes the authorities apply their guidelines as a law. At the end of the day, you have to implement data protection safeguards in terms of GDPR, national laws, EDPP opinions, industry costs or conducts, national DPA guidelines, European Union recommendations and guidelines. At, but you have to deal with the in-house culture of organizations. From my experience, this is really important. The first step is to train the team. Sometimes when we are considering the innovation in your organization, the most important thing if, is to manage the changes, to manage the culture change of people. Why? Because sometimes uh, we apply the, uh, the rule that, okay, we have to go fast and broke things. Do you know this expression and the origin of that? But we are in Europe. We can go fast or we could, we, we could go fast, but we have no to broke things. Then it means that our business staff, our security staff, our designers, all of the people needs to be trained on privacy issues. We need an internal culture of privacy, an internal culture of data protection. And you need uh, to take, to have an adequate support. Who is your data protection officer? Do you contract, have you contract a, a consultant about that? Because it's absolutely relevant to work with this person for the starting point of the project. Legal team is not uh, the last person to know your project. It's the first, probably. And of course, we will see how to anonymize, anonymize data. Uh, you have to provide safeguards. Are the data legitimate? Do you obtain that with consent? Are the data provided by the public authorities with an act, resolution, provision in an open data uh, website? Do you need a data protection impact assessment? Remember that Article 35 of GDPR states clearly that if you are processing a large amount of data and that data regards to health or healthcare, or that data could impact seriously in the human rights of persons, and DPA is that if you are using a innovative technologies and so on, you have to implement a data protection impact assessment. This is an advanced risk analysis that will provide you conclusions about how to process the data. And this is really important. Uh, I recommend strongly the use of the uh, La, La Commission Nationale de l'Informatique et la Liberté, the DPA of France, a uh, software to do that, to implement that. It's a really useful software to uh, implement a data protection impact assessment, and it's for free. Uh, second, uh, if you uh, have not to implement a data protection impact assessment, in any case, you need a risk analysis. Please, you need to understand that when we are talking about DPIA or when we're talking about risk analysis, we are not considered only security. We are considering the impact on the human rights of the data subject of the processing. Of course, 
you have to adopt security measures in terms of organizative measures, technical measures, physical measures, and you have to uh, implement process, processes of warranting data protection rights, transparency, informed consent, access erasure, and so on. You have to have a record of processing activities, and of course, uh, the data process agreements are really important. But we have decided to uh, use three-day 3D anonymized models. Recital 26 of the GDPR uh, states that when the data are anonymized, we don't apply GDPR, but there are requirements to do that. First of all, we have to verify the risks. We are talking about inference, vinculation, or singling out. We must not be capable of re-identificate a person. But to consider that, we have to look outside of our organization. This is not a requirement that considers your own capabilities. This, is, this considers third parties' capabilities. Then if any third party could re-identify with costs with any with a significant amount of time, if there is available technology, or probably in future it will be uh, available, in that cases you have a problem. You are not processing anonymized data. You are processing personal data, and in that case you will apply GDPR. For that, the Opinion Five 2014 recommend us to adopt strategies as randomization, generalization, data reduction, pseudonymization, or additional tools like a layered anonymization or digital trusted stamp time stamping. At the end of the day, they strongly recommend us to apply different techniques to be sure, to be sure that the data will be correctly anonymized. It means that probably you have to uh, anonymize data in two steps to be sure that uh, you are verifying the risks in any step. This is uh, the layered anonymization technique. And we are talking about uh, the image of persons. It means that it's really easy to identify biometric data on that case, an additional reason to deploy and uh, the DPIA. Please, you have to understand uh, this clearly. In the mind of DPAs, in the mind of data protection authorities, anonymization is really difficult. In fact, most of them consider impossible to anonymize. We have to be really rigorous when we anonymize data. And if I uh, have a supplier, I decide to work with a other company to do that, we have to be accountable. And this is a really a strong provision of Article 28 of GDPR. You have to use only processors providing sufficient guarantees to implement appropriate technical and organizational measures. And you have to uh, have a contract and uh, processors agree with them. How to be sure about your provider? You have to ask the company about if they have uh, developed a data protection impact assessment. I must uh, underline that. Okay, you could be in a small or medium enterprise. From this point of view, you need uh, a third company to provide you with the technology to uh, make these 3D images, for example, for sizing your customers. In that case, you are not processing a large amount of data, but the processor will process a large amount of data with risk of identification with biometrics data and so on then the company, your provider, 
have to demonstrate has to demonstrate that they develop a DPIA. You must to be trust in a security uh, certified standard uh, uh, adopted by the company. For example, ISO 27018. Or if the company is adhered to a code of conduct, he is member. He have the membership on a code of conduct. He shows you a certified audit. He demonstrates that uh, they trained in the, that they trained of the staff. They inform you about the anonymization techniques. In any case, in uh, these recent weeks, in this recent month, we have to be vigilant about the international data transfers. We have a very big problem with the SCREMS resolution of the European Court of Justice. You remember that the EDPB, the European Data Protection Board, has published a Q&A document when they said clearly that we have a problem of trust with providers under Privacy Shield. This means that the companies must provide you additional warranties, additional certainties, about the fulfilling of European law in that context. In conclusion, I identify different issues to provide a good model of compliance of general data protection regulation. First of all, you have to apply the data protection by design and by default philosophy. It means that you are concerned with human rights, with your consent, with your customer rights, and you will design your innovation activity considering the rights of persons. It means that probably you will implement a data protection impact assessment, not only to fulfill the law, but to learn about the conditions of the processing, to identify risks, to implement and to apply remedies, to be sure that all is okay and you are guaranteeing the rights of your customers. In addition, you have to adopt all of the guarantees uh, stated by the GDPR. Consent, informal consent, transparency, and guaranteed rights of the data subjects, uh, considered the outsourcing in terms of data processor agreement, and so on. You have to be sure that at the end of the day, you are fulfilling general data protection regulation. Finally, to anonymize, to anonymize the data, remember, you have to use appropriate anonymization techniques. You have to check the risk of re-identification. You have to check the reliability of your suppliers. I think uh, I used uh, 25 minutes, more or less, and we have time uh, to uh, questions, if you want, Alexandra. Okay, thank you very much, Ricard. Uh, we have one question about how does BodyPass handle U.S. data? Uh, could you explain me U.S. data? Uh, Carol, please, could you explain? U.S. U.S., yes. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we, we are going to the next question, okay? Uh, are they the same standards when dealing with data collected before RGPD and after uh, RGPD? For example, not the same consent mean? Uh, uh, I, I need to, to understand to, uh, this question, but you are okay. uh, we are considering the difference between uh, processing data with consent or with uh, another kind of legitimation, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'm trying to explain during my uh, presentation is that usually in commercial relationship, uh, the main basis for process data is the consent. Uh, in that sense, uh, the contract, uh, when an, a person, when people are buying you uh, your products, uh, the contract legitimates the process, legitimate the processing as regarding the, uh, execu the execution of the contract. It means that, okay, to, to name your to know your name your uh, credit card number and so on you don't need consent to do that but when you are taking about when you are talking about taking an image for an additional service you need consent in case of healthcare services uh, healthcare research sometimes we, we could access to data if they are anonymized because national laws uh, provide this possibility 
In this case, uh, the legitimation to process data is the law. Okay, thank you. Um, about the first question, uh, Carol said that it's United States data. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I understand. Uh, okay, we have to consider here two kinds of possibilities regarding the data flows. Of course, uh, if the data come from United States, they have probably, they apply their uh, national laws. It depends on the origin of data. If they come from healthcare systems, probably they have applied the provisions of, of uh, HIPAA law. If they are, if they provide, uh, the data come from uh, commercial environments, they will apply the tort law, the civil law, or the uh, state law regarding the consent of persons. And uh, you have to be, uh, you have to trust on the legitimate origin of data. In that cases, uh, usually uh, there is a data sharing agreement when it is really relevant to be sure that your provider is uh, saying clearly, is demonstrating the legitimate origin of data. But in this uh, flow of data, uh, we have to consider uh, two possibilities in the context of Europe. First, the data are anonymized. Okay. We need, we don't need to do anything in terms of GDPR, but there is a second possibility. They are personal data. In that case, when a controller established in Europe, in, 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 in the European Union, process data have to apply GDPR. This means that we have to uh, guarantee the rights of American uh, citizens. It means that we have to be sure that they have been informed and so on. I think this is the question. We are not talking about the, uh, the flow from European Union to United States, because in this case, we have the problems um, stated by the screams those resolution where they said, okay, this is, uh, how to say it, uh, United States is not a, a secure country in terms of law because they, they don't assure, they don't guarantee the uh, rights of European citizens. And this is a really problem because we have to uh, look for another legitimation basis. And uh, the EDPB have, has a state that this is an extraordinary possibility. We have to consider first to protect rights and only in extraordinary uh, cases, we could transfer data to the United States. Okay, thank you very much, Ricard. Uh, there are not more questions, so we have to leave this, this session and let's go to the, to the next session, okay? Thank you very okay, much. Okay, we're on time. Many thanks.